Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's time to meet our community, the Hispanic business community here in Orange County. Powered by the Orange County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And Orange County's only community radio station, OC Talk Radio. Streaming live from our studios here at the University of California, Irvine's Beal Applied Innovation Center. With a tasty treat today, John, who'd you bring in? Yes, welcome everybody to our community podcast show powered by the Orange County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. I'm your host, Senior Vice President here, John Gutierrez. We have another uh, special group here with us today. They are Cafe Cultura from downtown Santa Ana. These guys are dear friends, community leaders. We have with us today, Sam Ruiz and of course, Frank Farias. Uh, but we also know that uh, Luis, Red, Anaya, and Gilbert Meza are listening to us. So we'll send a quick shout out to them. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. Oh, let's thank get you, their mics you. up here. There we go. Let's make sure we can hear them here. All right, go ahead. All right, there we go. Let's try that. How the, try that again. Thank you for having us, John. Yes. <laughs> likewise, likewise. Thank you, man. Now, did, you, did they not get the memo that they're supposed to bring food? <laughs> Paul. <laughs> Paul always wants food. You know, he gets feed the here. producer. That's what it says. Yes, right feed the, the producer. Is that what it says? Well, listen, Paul, if you want to try the food, you got to go to downtown I, Santa Ana. I guess I got to go. To Cafe Cultura, which That's is, in, I like to tell people it's in front of the big federal building there. And so today we're going to get to know the founders, the owners. We're going to get to know the history of it. And we'll go into some of the great food they have and everything that's going down da downtown Santa Ana with them. And so, again, thank you, Sam, for being with us and Frank. And uh, can you guys just start off by giving us a little bit of a, of a history of Cafe Cultura, where it got started, how it got started, and how did you end up in downtown Santa Ana? Well, <laughs> I was going to say I'll let Frank take it, but he pointed. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the story goes back quite a bit um, about almost eight and a half years now uh, at the time me and my wife were operating our, our other cafe coffee shop euro cafe of course right by south shout coast. out to euro cafe shout out to euro cafe because i course. know there's one over there by south coast plaza we love that one right but you're opening a new one of course in downtown orange right right at the orange circle yeah we've we've been really lucky to get into a great market there so that'll be coming up probably in the next few few months and it's important we share that with our listeners because we're all about small businesses here at the chamber and right. we're all about what's the history. How did you get into this? Why, why did you start this? And obviously Cafe Cultura, the roots come from you and your wife at Euro Cafe. And then Correct. suddenly, how did it end up to what it is obviously starting off Cafe Cultura? Well, it was uh, a combination of things. Uh, Luis, uh, Red and I have, of course, a, had been a longtime friend of mine. And for the longest time, he had always told me like, hey, like the next time there's something like a Euro, like, Let's do it together. And then me and him, me being from Mexico City, we said we should do something more Latin theme, more Mexican theme, more for our people. So you were um, born in Mexico? I was born and raised in Mexico City, yes. So I was there until I was about nine years old. So you have so, a lot of those roots there, right? Yeah, for me, I mean, if you go to Mexico City and then you walk our shop, it feels like it should be there. That and it was, does. It does. I love the paintings. I love the art. If you've never been to it as a listener, uh, it's, it's a beautiful restaurant. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. so that that's... Eight years of work because we're always evolving, changing it, um, you know, but that's sort of how it, it, it's actually nine, nine going on, years. Going wow. On, going, going on, on nine. 10. Yeah. Going Lose on track 10. of time. <laughs> uh, you know, they said, Hey, you don't count the years when you're having fun. Frank says it feels like 20. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's kind of how it started. Um, at the time there at that location, there was a, uh, it was more of a tiendita, more of a store. Okay. A gentleman named Rudy used to sell uh, t-shirts and, and Mexican me merchandise. Nice. Um, and at the time he was trying to transition into something else in his life. So he reached, uh, reached out to me cause he knew me through Euro at the time when I was building out Euro. Uh, I believe he was a, a manager there at Home Depot and I was buying a bunch of stuff and he's like, Hey, are you building like a restaurant? Like, how do you know? I was like, oh, yeah, because I, I I'm trying to do the same. Oh. So that's kind of how I met Rudy. And then at the time, like I said, he had, you know, his more of a store. And he was trying to do something else at the time with his life. So he said, hey, I'm, I'm interested in, in selling my store, selling my location. So that's when I called Luis Red and I said, hey, there, there could be a chance in, you know, downtown Santa Ana for, for us to do what we've always kind of wanted to do. And uh, at the time, he felt that it was the right time to do it. So then we spoke to Rudy about it and uh, he had a little bit of, of a disconnect with what it was worth. So at the time we said, hey, 
you think it's worth more than what we think as far as taking over your spot. So go ahead and uh, you can stay on board as a silent partner kind of thing. He did. We, we opened up 30 days. We gutted the place, remodeled the place, kind of relaunched. And uh, we kept some of the stuff that he used to sell uh, on, on our menu to kind of not make people feel we were strangers. Downtown Santa Ana has always been a very tight-knit community. Yes. And yes. as development was happening, there was a lot of this big word gentrification being thrown around. So we, we didn't want to feel like we were just wiping out what he had been for so many years as a, you know, as a, the, the local tiendita. And uh, we've relaunched and it, it kind of took off, to be honest with you, faster than we thought. A few years later, we, we came to a conclusion with him that he wanted to keep his original name and we wanted to move forward. So then we, we just decided to split. Um, he, he kept his name. And then we, we, at that time, became Café Cultura. Okay. Where does Frank and Gilbert come along in this history? You guys became partners at what point, or how did that happen? This is important because keep in mind, again, at the Orange County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, we love helping businesses grow. Right. And you have to think of a mentorship, right, in the essence of anybody listening here. Right. This is part of evolving. This is part of growth and changes, right? Of course. So we want to know that story. How did that happen when you bring you, other you partners? jump in on this one sure yeah. so uh you know like sam mentioned he had um at the time euro cafe with his wife and uh, sister-in-law and he and uh red would always you know talk about doing something in the future right red being the uh, entrepreneur he is wanted to uh grow his portfolio in investments right and so, that's luis anaya luis aka, AKA red. red red just want to make sure we, we right, clarify right that. so um they're like who people are listening like who's red you know? <laughs> so red and i at the time were doing uh real estate i was just getting my real estate license and uh, i was under his wing so uh red um would always talk about dude uh, euro cafe and we would actually go eat euro cafe after working out because red had a gym a boxing gym uh with uh Chewy, nice. RTV, um, RTV boxing. Chewy Gutierrez. Chewy Gutierrez. So nice. um, he and Red were partnered up that with, with that gym. And uh, I think Sam was doing supplements at the time as well as another project. Right. So uh, entrepreneurs, right? You yeah, know, just, just, trying to, just trying to get, you know, yeah. get ahead of the, the rat race type of thing. Right. And uh, so Sam reaches out to Red, says, hey, I have this opportunity for this restaurant. Red tells me, hey, do you want to come with? Because I was always with Red. It almost como chicle. You know, we're always together because I was. Chicle his, means gum, guys. Gum. Gum. Yes, yes. I was stuck to him. <laughs> Because <laughs> uh, I was trying to, you know, get learn during, during real estate, and Red was, you know, guiding me on that. So I show up to this meeting with Sam. Um, I'm just a third wheel there now, and uh, Red's like, "Hey, I want him to get on board." Uh, and Sam's like, "Oh, what, what does he know about restaurants?" You know, and I'm like, "Hey, well, I happen to come from a family of restaurants. Um, my godfather used to own El Comal. You know, back That's in the day. That's right. That's right. El Comal. El Comal, yeah. right? Um, which happens to also be Gilbert's uncle. Um, That's so, right. That's right. Um, wow. Through talking maybe a week and a half of talking about you know potentially taking over this this Santa Ana location um I that's how I came into the picture of becoming a partner with Sam that's and Red. great that Red introduced you that way like hey let's have him be involved in this right 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 because the biggest concern that Red always would make tease me for with Euro is that we were enslaved there we were there all day every day and every anybody who's listening or knows family that has a restaurant it's like a second marriage you're there mm -hmm. all the time so he knew and understood that. So he told me, hey, my livelihood is real estate. You know, at the time he had uh, two kids and a wife. He had just moved back from Arizona. So he's like, I can't be there all day every day at the restaurant because I need to provide for my family. But in, ex you know, in lieu or in exchange of me not being able to be there for so long, I can bring this guy who would be our partner who can also help us carry the load of what it takes the, to the, the day to day. And I've learned that that's always important. Even at Euro Cafe, it's me and my wife and my sister-in-law. I think if I would have tried to do it alone, I would have probably lost my mind. And But my mentor is uh, Steve Carfridis, which is a Greek guy who's partnered with Wing and Lamb, who founded uh, Wahoo's Fish Tacos. Okay. And I've learned from them that one guy can't do it all. So they, yeah. it's, it was, you know, four of them. It was the three Hawaiian brothers and then Steve, who came back from more of the corporate field, kind of helped them develop. So understanding that more bodies is better is is why i was really open to the idea of of when red talked about bringing frank on board was because we we i knew we were going to need the manpower we you know, I had done it already for three years and there's no way two people could kind of take over that kind of responsibility that's great that you saw that i can't do it by myself it's right. okay and not to mention you had another restaurant right right and and even at that restaurant you have other family members right and for our listeners it goes to show folks that 
you can't do it by yourself. Nope. You have you can't be so stubborn, right? right. And as a business owner, I know I have my wife, my sister that are always there helping me. You know, as partners, we're helping each other, and um, it's 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 great to see that you saw that there was an opportunity to work together because he easily could have been like, no man, I got this. I, I don't need you guys. I'm good. Right. 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 So, so then at that point you get involved, Frank gets involved. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Frank, you and red get involved. Correct. What happens next? We come to an agreement with the old owner of the, the, the location. We literally design a menu and a concept in like 10 days. Nice. And we just go crazy. We, tear the place down to studs yes and we remodel the towel remodel the whole place and uh, we open we open we just see like and see. what year was that 2014 2014 july 26 25th. what was that like for you guys as oh i mean because you're opening now a different concept right right from what you had of it's, course it's a, it's a little bit of a risk it's a risk. It, it was. It's similar but different. Similar. I mean, it has. You know, the, the foundation is like a coffee shop, a cafe. By the way, I love the chilaquiles. <laughs> if you ever go there, I got to throw this out there, Paul. And I'll take you there, Paul. I'll take you there to eat. Everybody's holding you accountable. For yes, you can't bring chilaquiles here because no. it's. If you if you ever eat chilaquiles, they get you know soggy. soggy. If you right. you got to eat them fresh, right? Yeah, our food's meant to be eaten fresh yeah. at the restaurant. Yes, and by the way, the lines. I mean, credit to your great food. Thanks. I was just there the other day, and the lines were just... It goes to show all the love from the community. Of they course. appreciate the love you're giving back the community. Right. I personally love the torta, the breakfast torta, breakfast torta. that has chorizo. And I think it has... Um, Queso fresco, beans, spinach. You know, I'm not a spinach eater. My wife's mm -hmm. probably listening going, yeah, that's true. He doesn't <laughs> like spinach. Yeah. But I love it in that torta. Yeah. Yep. It's interesting how... Well I don't even think about it. Thank you, Frank. Well balanced. Mm -hmm. Very delicious torta. If you're listening, chilaquiles and the breakfast torta are two of my favorites. And of course, you guys have an assorted of like really cool uh, breakfast stuff, right? Somebody wants to know what a chila. Uh, I, I, I'm not alone. What a chilaquiles? What is so, a chilaquiles? Sam, please. Sam, share with everybody <laughs> what a this. chilaquiles is. Chilaquiles is, uh, well, there's. There's a history behind it, and then there's a basic description. Short which, version. Short for the, version. For the record, short Sam version. did not like chilaquiles. Oh. I grew up in Mexico City, so I'm spoiled with good food. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> chilaquiles, uh, the best way to describe them, they're breakfast nachos. That's what I call them. Breakfast nachos? Mm. Sam, that That's is what a it is. great way to put it. Bre breakfast nachos. But he, he just offended half of us. <laughs> <laughs> but sure, I mean, I yeah. can't confirm or deny, but I guess. You know. The chile verde are my favorite ones. Chilaquiles, mm. the chile verde, and... Um, Paul, I have you never had them, really, Paul? No, I never even heard of them. We got to go have some. So, yes. Continue with your explanation of chilaquiles. Yes. Them. So in essence, is you take tortillas. You know, back in the day, they're probably like the older tortillas that they're trying to salvage. Cut them up into triangles. They fry them. Usually, they're you know pan fried, deep fried. Once those are all nice and crispy, you turn on your pan. You heat up your either green or your red salsa, which is more traditional. Some places uh, do them with mole. Some places do them so with whatever. Sounds so delicious. Uh, Once your salsa nice and hot, you throw chips in there. You saute them. Get them all going. Again, breakfast nachos. Then you – standard usually comes with two sunny side up eggs. That's right. You smother mm -hmm. them in queso fresco and then fresh, you know, crema. So delicious. Cilantro. Some places like to do onions. We don't. I feel like a lot of people are – Some 50, people 50 add meat, onions. right? right. Like, of course, yeah. yeah. You can always add steak or uh, mm. chicken. Now we're actually adding yeah. pastor to our menu, so you'll be able to add al pastor to Ooh, ours. Ooh, pastor. Right. Yes, sir. So oh, wow. That's a, a short description of what it is, but it's a comfort food back in Mexico. A lot of people, you know, of, of – of out of need this kind of became a thing they didn't want to throw away their old tortillas like what do we do with them so yeah. they fried them and for somebody who's never been there <laughs> how would you describe you say it's like a cafe is there a t particular style of cuisine because i've learned through my daughter that there's many styles of mexican food there's yes veracruz has one kind with you guys fish, have a maybe. mixture though don't you what did you north say north and south and everything there's so, all these different cuisines so red red our business partner red likes to say hey you know all mexican food is not buckets of beer and banda right right <laughs> which which is right i think you know we have that bad famous mexicans that that's all mexican food is you go to marisco and it's just banda and buckets of beer right it's not the case the, the republic of mexico has many many cultures to offer as far as you know cuisine um and what what we took is my daughter always likes mole, is that, mole. And, and and that's only from i think like veracruz or whatever there's some part of mexico where that's more prominent right, right. so i mean there's different regions of mexico that 
introduce a specific plate, right? And then every other part of Mexico introduces their version of it, right? Like, right. I mean, there's over probably 30, 40, 50 versions of chilaquiles, right? So um, when people say, hey, my, my grandma made them this way, well, that's great, we make them this way. <laughs> it's different. You so know? how would you describe, is it from a particular region or a particular style? Or I, I think I would, say, I, would th I would say the majority of, her, of our food is more Mexico City styled. Yeah. More, more of like, uh, you know, breakfast on the go kind of thing. In Mexico City, there's tons of food vendors, street vendors. So we, we kind of took that concept and, and kind of give it more of like a modern twist. Um, because we wanted to come up with something that was it something that we're not trying to be, right? We're not trying to serve you a $60 plate or we're not trying to become a, a place that's going for a Michelin star or anything like that. We wanted something that was fast, casual, good quality, but at the same time rooted in like our culture. We're, but it's very, but it's very family oriented. That's what I like about it. Right. Um, when you arrive there, you've got, um, as you enter it, it is this cafe kind of feeling, very mm -hmm. peaceful, very calm. Right. You even have a little lounge area there to right. the right that I, I think that's Amigos. really cool. Yeah. Um, so you can come in and, and in essence, I hate to make that comment to the other Starbucks world, but you have a nice place in case you don't want to eat food, you yeah. can just come and chill and have a nice cafe yep. de olla, right? right? Cafe de olla. Cafe de olla. Um, you, you can just have a pan dulce because you have delicious pan dulce. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's that that con that concept there is really cool. But then again, hey, by the way, we're hungry. Let's get some food now, right, right. or something. Okay. So that's what I love of the balance of your right. your business. Yeah. So we were able to take, uh, I guess, the best of both worlds, right? A restaurant and then a coffee house, right? We're considered a specialty coffee house, which means we have high grade organic uh, coffee, right? Um, it's not like other coffee houses that are serving. You know, there's different levels to it, right? We're considered specialty house coffee, but we also have food. So it's the yeah. best of both worlds, and right? Does and the like, coffee come from? I don't even know. Do they grow coffee in Mexico? They or do. Yes. From so our coffee Mexico? happens to come from uh, Chiapas, Mexico. It's a single origin, uh, organic. So it goes through a specific process to be graded organic. So you don't just decide to label it. It, it has to go Real through quick, a grading process. Frank, show with people what is cafe de olla because I think a lot of people don't know what that is, and I love cafe de olla because I'm not a very heavy coffee drinker, drinker. Yeah. so cafe de olla is more chill yeah, right? so i mean cafe de olla uh you know came about from you know kind of the same story what sam was mentioning the, the chilaquiles right it became it's more of a humble beginning where people were roasting coffee um uh, i mean not a cosola but yeah like a clay pot like a clay pot, clay pot and and you know they were making uh coffee they were burning coffee beans per se and then they were making it into an actual you know coffee drink by adding cinnamon and then some people started adding uh, piloncillo, which sweetened it, and then that's kind of how you know. There's different versions of it, but that's how, it, in essence, how it, it came about. Yeah, cafe de olla. I, I really like cafe de olla because I'm not a big heavy cafe. So if you've never had it, go out and try it. Of course, I want to go into a little bit about what is next for you know. Obviously, cafe cultura. Are you guys? I know you mentioned you're incorporating el pastor now uh, right. meats. What is next? What's going on? I know you opened another one in Azusa, right? Correct. Yep, downtown Azusa, right. Uh, down the street from APU, is a Pacific University, but close enough to like uh, Pasadena, neighboring cities where we can kind of try to. And that one has fun. a huge patio. Yeah, that one we got. We got really, really lucky. Um, the, it, the the patio is massive, so we kind of built the uh, cover on that. And it's California. People love outdoor dining. I mean, this week not particularly in that location because it's so close to the mountains and it's tons of snow this week, and it's really cold out there. But for the most part, California is, you know, sunshine state. So we, we really have focused more on locations that have a great patio, like we built here in downtown Santa Ana and then now in Azusa. But our goal is to continue to do that in cities where we feel there's a good balance of the food culture and at the same time, our culture, which would be Hispanic or specifically, you know, Mexicans. But I think it's great that you're going into these downtown areas. You're also helping those communities. You're bringing business, cultural you're educating the community on who we are as far as a Hispanic community. Of course. You're bringing your background from Mexico City. I know you guys go to Mexico and you go visit, but yeah. I've seen how you guys like to study the foods there, right? Yeah. 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 I think, and anybody who's listening who has ever worked or owned in a restaurant understands that food is a lot like art. Everybody kind of inspires each other. So we like to go down there because the same way people who design, you know, fashion in, in California fly to Paris to see what's what's the next best thing in fashion going to these different areas of, of Mexico. It is uh, good to see what's, what's, what's up and coming there. What's trending, right? Maybe all of a sudden they 
couple of years ago, everybody was doing this torta de tamal, which put is putting a you know a tamal inside of, of a mm. of a bolillo, which is like a Mexican. I seen that. Dough. Yeah. yeah. So you know I, we did that for a couple months just to kind of try it to give people a little bit of taste of what's going on over there. Everybody doesn't have the luxury to go to Mexico every six months. Yes. Some of us are really lucky that we can have that ability. So trying to bring the new ideas and what's kind of happening over there here is is a lot of people do that, and we've seen that being done very well by you know other names in the in the industry who are doing great things well i want to thank you guys for uh, inviting me to your downtown azusa grand opening i was a part of that right. you know gilbert invited me out you guys invited me out and um it was just it was an awesome event um i obviously i wasn't part of your downtown center because i was like over 10 years ago right. right but to see the launching of it the starting of it the community coming there i know you had a celebrity stop by Drives. Uh, oh, Jay Leno. Jay yeah, Leno. Uh, yeah. We won't. We won't throw names out there. <laughs> yeah. Jay Leno. Yeah, you know yeah. that guy. You, you guys did something with him, right? Yeah, they film Cars and Coffee a lot in obviously areas of LA, and he was gonna go try a uh, electric, uh, electric version of a Porsche before the Porsche came out electric, and they rode it up and down the canyon. And our location, we got really lucky where if you're gonna go up into the Azusa Canyon, where a lot of people go off roading and you know driving fast cars. You have to go right by us. Right. Route 66. Is, Route 66. That's what we're on. So Foothill Boulevard, otherwise known as Route 66. Yeah. So he stopped by. Very nice man. Uh, it was uh, probably right a couple months right before he had the incident where he yeah. burned half his face off. It yeah. Was pretty sad, but he's doing well, I heard. So that's good. So that was a cool experience. It sure Very was. Very cool. Very it, cool. But it goes to show that even people like Jay Leno or these production companies are open and to the idea of like, let's incorporate our Hispanic community, right? Again, we're here yeah. at the Orange County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce uh, podcast show with Cafe Cultura, uh, the founders, of course, Sam Ruiz here, Frank Farias, and of course, we're missing Luis Red Anaya and Gilbert Meza, who, by the way, I've known Gilbert since we were kids in Santa Pop Warner. Yeah. Uh, that guy's like a brother to me, and his parents were almost like parents to me. So that he means a lot to me, and his parents mean a lot to me, and Good. shout out to him. Um, so, so let's go back to Santa Ana. Let's go back back down to downtown Santa Ana because I know there's been a lot going on there. The trolley, the trolley that's all being finished off, mm -hmm. right? So now things are clearing up, right? And I know there's been some cool downtown events going on, like right. like the Tamale Fest, and I know there's other stuff going on that Eddie Chiaris has been doing down there with his whole group. And so, what's next in downtown Santa? Because we want to make sure our listeners know. Let's get back out there. Let's go support you guys. It, yeah. Everything's back to normal. Yeah, of course. Yeah, COVID. COVID was a huge blow to downtown. Downtown was literally rapid, full steam ahead, tons of new restaurants opening. Uh, as, as the people who have been down there know, there's a huge development coming down from Toll Brothers there as well. You know, live and work lofts, new new retail space. So the trolley, I mean, if you looked at downtown Santa Ana now, you would not believe that if, if we were standing there 10 years ago and I told you this is what it's gonna be. It's, it's, it's literally Long Beach. 10 years ago long beach developed dramatically in the downtown second street and all those streets right there by the college so santa Ana was on the way up we were like i said full steam ahead and then covid came and was a huge blow to everybody tons of small businesses unfortunately didn't make it but the ones that did make it are, are slowly kind of getting back out there so we we're really proud of what everybody's kind of done collectively um, if you go down 4th Street, I think it's it's really nice to see how much is just modernized and cleaned up. There's a lot of people that have unfortunately labeled that as gentrification, but I think they need to be a little bit more informed as far as the details. The majority of the people that own businesses down there are people like us, Hispanics. right? Hispanics. Hispanics, second, third generations like us, you know, children of immigrants, people who are, who are making that jump to say, hey, if... If all these other people and all these other cultures can be business owners, why can't we do it? And going out there and, and making the jump, you know, historically restaurants in California, it's they're you know either, you know, Asian ethnicity owned or Greek, the Europeans like they they've dominated that industry. And sadly, we're always the people that work in them. So why can't we own them? So now you you see so many people like we're really good friends over with with Matt and Ana Laura over from Perla, and it's it's good to see more and more young. Hispanic or Mexican owned businesses, but because they're modern and different or sometimes labeled as gentrifiers, which were the opposite. Yeah. I'll tell you what, the words I like to use when people are trying to put titles and all that is after the pandemic, we hear a lot here at the chamber. I hear a lot from businesses, rebuild, restructure and pivot. 
Right. Those are probably the three most important words that I've heard in business lately. Right. Because coming out of the pandemic, it's like there's a lot of changes, right? right? You're rebuilding, you're restructuring, um, you're pivoting. Maybe you're adding different foods, different. I see you guys added a patio. Yeah. Right. And uh, I was just having uh, lunch the other day at Perlas. I took a client over there who's looking at their venue upstairs and we're sitting there and he's looking at your patio uh, and yeah. he says to me, you know, and this is Mario from Hispanic 100, who's one of our partners of our chamber. And he says, you know, they should build those on all these restaurants. That yeah. would be so cool to have all these cool patios. Right. But I know that's, you know, easier said than done. Right. Of course. Because you have the streets that you have the sidewalks. Right? right. And there's probably rules and regulations and laws and all this you have to go through. There, but it looks really cool. Your patio, by the way. Thank you. We, yeah. we like to consider ourselves uh, open to adapting. And I think that's the number one issue with a lot of businesses. Or, or people in general, right? We don't like to adapt. We don't like change. We don't either. But guess what? We have no choice but to adapt and and do what's best for the business and for our staff and for our customers, right? Uh, as far as that patio goes, we're hoping it could be uh, we could be the pioneers for a new downtown look. You know, at the end of the day, if, if downtown is going to develop the way we we foresee it to be in the next five to ten years, what better than having nice outdoor patios for all the businesses, man? And real quick. I want to make sure we give a shout out to your staff because we wouldn't be who we are in business if it wasn't for our hardworking everyday staff, right? right? And it's so hard to find good people today, it right? Is. It's so hard to find people that want to work and it's like people have disappeared, right? I hear this from a lot of our restaurant owners. I can't find enough people, uh, enough workers. And so right. shout out to your staff. They're always um, doing an amazing job. We have about two minutes left, guys. Share with the audience anything else you want to share as far as and I know you're adding the pastor. So is pastor going to be on everything? What are we doing? Burritos? Well, no, we're going to have a pastor burrito. We're going to have a pastor quesadilla and a pastor torta. Oh, but... pastor quesadilla. Right. That sounds so good. It but is. by adding the protein, now they can add it to whatever they wanted. So yes. if you want to add, chila, you know, pastor to chilaquiles, you can. If you want to have a breakfast burrito with pastor, you can. So just bringing it on board kind of opens the door to doing whatever we want. And on that note, I know you have a really good vegan uh, breakfast, right? Burrito, is it? I yeah, think? we do. Yeah. yeah. It took us, it took me about a good year to really be comfortable with doing it because I know vegan people have a really high standard of what it's supposed to be, taste like quality and sourcing it. So we found a couple of companies that we felt really good about putting a product out there that we felt tasted like us, but was still fully 100% you know, free mm -hmm. of animal byproduct. So we, we found just egg, we makes a great egg replacement. And then we found a really good, so, you know, soy riso that tastes a lot like the classic chorizo. Yes. And those two together just make a really good, if, if I were to give you a regular burrito and our vegan burrito and not tell you, and I cut it in half, you would not know. I'll be honest with you. I love the vegan burrito. It's okay. Feed, feed Everybody food, listening food and approved. watching, go try the vegan burrito. Let's, yeah. let's, let's have it, the vegan food, test. Food beast approved though. So. Because that is a big community. I got, probably at least two or three nieces that are vegan. My mom's vegan. I'm always looking at things for my mom, of course. Nice. Um, and, and I want to just, before we go, thank you guys. You guys were sponsors of our toy drive. Uh, and I really appreciated you guys coming out and supporting us uh, at our toy drive. And I, I've always appreciated that. You know, anybody who supports back the community and our toy drive, of course, goes to helping kids in the community, different right. charities. So thank you guys. Again, Cafe Cultura, guys, they're in downtown Santa Ana in front of the federal building, Big white building. Um, and um and and come check them out because i know i'm gonna take paul there i've promised them to come have chilaquiles and i personally like their, their i'm torta. holding you to it i'm holding either I, either you got to take me there or they got to come back with food one of the two's got to happen well let's go have lunch let's go have lunch <laughs> right um and, and real quick the hours of you guys operations that's important yes monday through friday it is 7 a.m to 2 p.m okay both locations Santa Ana on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday is uh, 9 to 3 p.m. Azusa is 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. And of yep. course, they can follow you on social media. Yep. Our, our Instagram is Cafecito Cultura or at Cafecito Cultura. And our website is CafecitoCultura.com. I got to tell you guys, you got to go to the Instagram. There's some <laughs> great photos of the food that makes you go i gotta go i gotta yep. go try this and there is a parking structure right next to you guys yep two so, hour free parking as well now so you don't have to worry about two that. hours free parking so yep. there's no excuse of i don't want to go to downtown santa Ana. there's no parking it's a yep. no there's a parking structure right next to you guys right next door and 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 come with patience guys because there is going to be a line but it's because you're getting quality food freshly made this isn't a drive-through this is quality food yep. made to uh, order 
Sam, thank you for being here. Uh, Frank, thank you. Appreciate it. Shout out to uh, Mr. Red, Luis Anaya, of course, Gilbert Meza. Shout out to the fellas. Um, and, and again, thank you for all the support. Folks, continue to follow us on our social media, Orange County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce on our Facebook page. And also, of course, on our Instagram, which is OCHCC. That will give you all of our networking events, our mixers, all of our signature events. We got Estrella Awards coming up, of course, our big gala. April 22nd. So make sure you sign up for that. And gentlemen, thank you for being here. Thank you for having, thank us. You for having us. Paul, take it away. Wow. If that doesn't get you hungry for more, I don't know what will. Come back and hear more as we continue to explore all the good food and good things happening around the county here, particularly in downtown Santa Ana. Right here on Orange County's only community radio station, OC Talk Radio. Streaming live from our studios here at the University of California, Irvine's Be Applied Innovations. Center.